Chapter 3 Early the next morning, Marcel pedalled off to the three-storey brick schoolhouse that was three streets down from the church. He had gone there since he was a little kid, and this was where he would stay until he graduated next year. He knew the long corridors with their highly waxed floors and the classrooms with their rows of slanted wooden desks, chalkboards and big windows as well as he knew the rooms in his own apartment. The day was an unexpectedly warm and he stood to unbutton his jacket. Under it, he had on a white shirt tucked into dark blue knee pants and he wore matching dark blue knee socks. Then he slung his satchel over his shoulder and checked that his tin lunchbox was in the bicycle's basket. On his way, he spotted a couple of older boys on a corner. One called out to him, Hey, shrimp! Are you getting shorter? yelled the other. Then they both began to laugh as they walked away. Marcel felt his cheeks getting hot, but he said nothing. When he heard his name called out, he tensed. Were they coming back to torment him some more? But no. It was he, it, he turned to see his friends, Gwillem and Arnold, waving over him. He got off the bike and locked it on the rack before joining them. Ça va? said Gwillem. How's it going? Ça va, Marcel said. It's going fine. Much as he wanted to, he was not telling anyone not even his good th- friends, about his parents and the resistance. It was too dangerous to talk about. The resistance members who were caught in, were interrogated and sent to prison. Or worse, they might even be shot. I saw you riding the other day. How's your speed? Arnold asked. Getting better every day, Marcel said. How about you? Arnold liked racing too and sometimes they raced each other. Arnold was taller, with longer legs, so he often won. But Marcel was scrappy and fearless on the bike. He'd keep on riding through conditions, mud, rocks, ditches, ice, and that would make many boys turn back. How about a race after school today? asked Arnold. We'll go to the road behind St Vincent de Paul that leads out of town. You're on. Marcel hoisted his satchel over his shoulder and headed into the classroom. We'll see who's the best rider. Once Marcel got settled at his desk, he felt less anxious. At least there were no soldiers in school. All that was taking place somewhere else, somewhere outside these walls. Here in the schoolroom, with neat rows of wooden desks, its big map of France in the back of the room and its black chalkboard on the front. Everything was familiar and safe. The faces around him were faces he'd known for years. Even Mademoiselle Babineau was someone he knew. She'd been coming to the bakery every Saturday for as long as he could remember. But he looked around the room and he saw that there was one girl he did not know, though he recognised her. It was the girl he'd seen in the street, the one whose cat he'd nearly run over. Today she wore a red and black plaid dress with a white collar. Her braids were neat and shiny. I heard she's from up north somewhere, maybe Paris, whispered Gwillem, who sat beside him and must have seen him staring. Her family's just moved here. Ever since the occupation, their little town had started attracting newcomers. Some settled in while others were just passing through. Which would it be for the new girl? What's her name? Marcel asked. Delphine something or other, Gwillem said. And why did her family come now, in the middle of term? Gwillem shrugged. How would I know? Anyway, why are you so interested? No special reason, said Marcel. He hoped he wasn't turning red. Boys, said Mademoiselle Babineau, stop your chattering and pay attention. Yes, Mademoiselle, said Marcel. He said nothing more to Gwillem, but all morning long he continued to watch the new girl. When Mademoiselle Babineau talked to the 
geometry lesson, Delphine's hand shot up every time. Every answer she got right. When she wrote at the blackboard, her penmanship was perfect. During the literature portion of the lesson, she recited a poem by Pierre de Ronsard from memory. Tribien, purred Mademoiselle Babineau. The only place she seemed to falter was when Sister Bernadette came in to instruct them in religion. The new girl did not raise her hand, and when she was called on, she gave the wrong answer. Some of the other kids snickered softly. At first, Marcel was glad to find that she wasn't so perfect. But when he saw her go pink with embarrassment, he felt sorry for her more than anything else. He knew what it was like to be teased and laughed at too. At recess, he saw her talking to some of the girls, including Paulette, who thought she was the smartest girl in school, if not the whole world. But why was he thinking so about her so much? He deliberately ignored the new girl and sat down to a game of chess with Arnold, who had bought a small board from home. Chess was very popular, and they did this almost every day at recess. Marcel wasn't such a good player, but he was trying to get better. His father had even got him a book that outlined all kinds of strategies for winning. Once Arnold set up the board and arranged the pieces, the game began. Arnold was a good player, moving his rook and his knight and even his queen with boldness that Marcel lacked. Still, he studied the board carefully and tried to ignore the comments from some of the other boys as they gathered around to watch. Quiet, Un ordered Arnold. If you guys can't shut up, you'll have to leave. Chess is serious business. You have to concentrate, not blab. The boys quieted down and the game continued. Last time they played, Arnold had won. Today, Marcel was determined to be the winner. But Arnold's aggressive style undermined his confidence and he, f he watched miserably as Arnold swept piece after piece off the board. Finally, Arnold proclaimed, Checkmate! And the game was over. Loser! Loser! chanted Arnold as he put the pieces away in the drawstring cloth bag. Marcel said nothing. They were good friends, but it didn't stop them from competing with each other about pretty much everything. Marcel knew that if he'd won, he'd have probably ta taunted Arnold in exactly the same way. <laughs>